Hey guys, social communications, welcome to my rant on what I gotta be honest, honestly has to say, I have to say this, this is the worst airplane disaster movie I've ever had the displeasure of watching, and that is Airspeed. Hold on for your life. Yeah, hold on for your life is right, because you gotta hold on with every ounce and energy of your existence to sit through this boring shitty, stupid-ass excuse for a movie. And what the fu I never noticed this before, but it appears that somebody who used to own this tape before I bought it at Valley Village put freaking stickers all over it and, like, put, like, a star and, and like, a lightning bolt, which is funny because there's, there's the, the, the lightning plays a big part of the film's plot and fucking flames... <laughs> <laughs> well, this movie goes down in flames. You know, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, this movie can burn in hell too. This fucking movie sucks. Ass. Fuck, sucked. Ugh, an hour and twenty-four minutes of my life that was completely wasted. That I could have been done doing something a lot better with my time, other than watching that shitty ass excuse for a movie. Anyway, we're like, okay, or I get to the point. Well, what's so bad about it? Almost every, pretty much everything is bad about this movie. It gets a 3.4 out of 10 on IMDb for good reason. It's directed by Robert Tunnell, who I don't think he directed much else. Didn't show very much of a talent here. Oh, he directed Frankenstein. Oh, he wrote Frankenstein and Me. Great, that one Burt Reynolds and like a Frankenstein. The last thing he directed was that shit will rot your brain. How the how the monster kids transformed popular culture. Interesting. Interesting. Well, that, that's funny because you know this shit will rot your brain. If you watch shitty movies like this, it will rot every goddamn brain cell out of your head. He directed Airspeed, uh, I believe after this. It's monster kid home movies. There be there here there be monsters some TV series. Uh, Requiem for the Damned, the segment for the fall of the House of Usher. And he directed some episodes of some TV miniseries called 1863. So yeah, he didn't do much. So Right for good reason, and then the direct, and then the writer Robert Richard Gordo, who I think was also one of the producers, he also wrote the screenplay to Believe, which was directed by. He directed one movie, which was F et at un Fois les Bois, a French movie, and he produced Believe, he wrote Believe, and he wrote Frankenstein and Me, and he wrote Airspeed, so. Didn't do much after that. And the film stars Elisha Cuthbert. Now, Elisha Cuth El Cuthbert is a hot... She grew up to be a really smoking hot chick. She was in The Girl Next Door. She was in House of Wax, the remake, which I actually liked. She was also in 24. She was terrible in this. She was horrendous in this movie. She played the lead in this, and she could not carry the film. Her 13-year-old self could not carry this movie. The weight was too much for her 13-year-old shoulders to carry. And her character was... I mean, her acting for a 13-year-old actress... It's kind of hard for me to really be mad at her. Because she's given such a shitty script to work with. Her character is asked to act like a complete, utter, despicable annoying ass brat in the beginning of the movie so then from the first 15 minutes you're introduced to this character and you want to throw her out the plane already well, that's great and this ultimately ends up being your hero this is the person that you have to root for or you're supposed to root for this is a, this is the person who's going to save the plane land the plane and the person that you're supposed to be cheering on and from the way the film starts i don't give a shit about this little girl like I said, she could go fuck, 
fly out the fucking plane for all I fucking care. She's fucking obnoxious. She's a spoiled little rich bitch. And I don't give a shit what happens to her. So great. It's a great way to start off your movie with me not giving a flying fuck about what happens to your lead. Also, it's a stupid idea to have a movie like this where your lead and your hero is a 13-year-old girl. I'm sorry, it's a dumbass idea and there's a reason why it's never been done since this movie because it was an idea that was too stupid even for an airplane, airport sequel. They even mention airport movies in like a joke in this movie which I'm like, you know what? As bad as some of the airport sequels are they're a lot better than this piece of shit. This movie was so shitty that I'm willing to give Turbulence some more credit. And I did not like Turbulence. But Turbulence is better than this movie. That's for fucking sure. Anyway. Yeah, all three Turbulence movies are better than this fucking piece of shit. So anyway. So yeah, you, you have a 13 year old girl as a lead. She's not likable. She's unlikable from the beginning. I don't give this shit, it's a story arc. She's now learning that she doesn't have to be a spoiled brat and whatever. Don't start out your movie like that. How about that, how about that? How about start out the movie with this girl being likable? Then I might give a shit. But if she starts out as being a fucking brat, it's like too little too late. You learned your lesson way too late in the game. You should not be acting like a j fucking bitch. How about that? How about that novel concept? Anyway, the basis, you also have Joe Montana who's in this, who plays the father of, of Elisha Cuthbert's character, uh, Nicole. So Joe Montana plays Raymond Stone, Elisha Cuthbert plays Nicole Stone, Brown and Booth plays Andrew Prescott, who I believe is the wife of Joe Montana. Lynn Adams, no, it's, that's Marilyn Stone. Andrew Prescott is the other chick that's on the plane. Because it's like a business plane for uh, Technocom or tech, Technicom or Technocock or whatever the fuck it's called. I don't give a shit. It might as well be called Technocock. This movie's a Technocock right up your ass. So, uh, I just have that fucking 747 airliner just plow right through my asshole while you're at it, piece of shit. Anyway, so, Technicom, I think that's what it is. And it's a computer company that's went really popular, headed by Joe Montana. And there's even a scene where he's at a meeting or whatever, and she's, his daughter's on the plane, Elijah Cuthbert. Uh, and she's with a few other of his co-worker friends, like Andrew Prescott, played by Brown and Booth, just a shitty actress. Um, Lynn Adams, Marilyn Stone plays Joe Montana's character's wife. Russell Ewan, who plays Mark, who's some character who's really is like mid one line. Gordon Maston plays Frank, who's the other guy who's on the plane, some fat guy who has no self esteem. So you have two bitches on the plane. So you have the bitchy rich bitch kid, and then you have the other, the other. A uh, bitch, Andrea, who's like, yeah, but you, why do you have to be so misbehaving? You, I, I, cha I changed it. You remember, man, I, I changed your diapers when you were a kid. You don't have to be like this. And I'm like, I don't have to sit through this shit either. <laughs> Who would want to sit through a movie where the first five minutes just turns you off with some annoying ass rich bitch who's acting like a spoiled little brat, being a complete douche, and then you have other people, the only other people on the plane is Andrew, who's like, eh, nah, 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 nah. and then you have the fat fuck guy with the low self-esteem, like, super low self-esteem, why do you have to be so mean, I'm like, wow, this, this guy, you're a grown man, you're a grown man, you might be a little bit chunky, but you're a grown man, tell that girl to respect you, Demand respect from that little girl. Don't matter if she's got rich daddy. Give me a break. Don't be taking any kind of insults from a. It's like, oh yeah, well it's, you, you know, oh, uh, oh, I'm, I'm scared, I'm scared. It's like, yeah, cause you, you know, you, you, you know, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't piss me off. It's like, why not? Well, you know what I do when I'm angry. Yeah, you eat a lot. You eat more. Well, that's not nice. I mean, come on. That's that's a line of dialogue in this movie. That would be like, if I had that kid, like, well, you, you just eat more. Yeah, I do, because I like food. And 
You need to shut up. How about that? Sit down, shut up, buckle up. Plane's going from some turbulence. Stop being a little brat. Do I have to call your parent? Do I have to call your father? Do I have to do that? Or your mother on a cell phone? Do you want to talk to your parents? Do I have to put you in a timeout? You're a 13 year old. Start acting, start behaving yourself. Stop acting like a toddler. So, I, I mean, whatever. Maybe she just needs a little bit of a spanking. I don't know. I know. I, it's probably mean. But, I mean, seriously, she's a bitch in this movie. I don't care if she's 13 years old. She's a bitch in this movie. So, anyway, what happens is, a ridiculous, uh, they go through a storm, and the lightning bolt strikes the cockpit, and the pilots get, 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 get electrocuted with shitty visual effects that look cheap as all hell. And then, for some reason, we the girl, uh, Nicole, she survives because, well, she was dicking around being a complete little brat. She took out the, the first aid kit and was using the oxygen mask and playing around with them, like, acting like she's Darth Vader. I'm not kidding. She's like... Luke, I am your father. It was like, come to the dark side, Luke. Oh, I'm like, kill me, please. Just take that for fucking oxygen tank and just bash my goddamn brains. And this is this is this is this is painful. And so she's being obnoxious. Lightning strikes the plane. The pilots get knocked unconscious, which I call bullshit on. They should be dead. You get struck by lightning, your heart stops. You're not going to get knocked unconscious. This isn't the same thing as getting smacked in the head with a bat or some shit. Fall tripping and falling and knocking your head on the asphalt. That's a lightning bolt. Your body is, has a lot of energy in it. Your heart is essentially a battery. Why else do you think they have, you know, the defibrillators? You get struck by lightning, your your heart stops. It doesn't, you don't just get, go unconscious. Conscious. Fucking unconscious bullshit. So anyway, and then the, the whole controls all, you know, get electrocuted and fried too. But that doesn't matter because... The, the, this, 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 I, like I said, turbulence is dumb. But this takes the cake. This shit takes the cake. This is one of the dumbest... D d dumber than dumb. Like, d Turbulence is a fucking genius movie compared to Air Speed. <laughs> or more like Air Shit. Anyway, so you... What happens is... And I don't even know why I call it Air Speed, because it's not really a very fast-paced movie. It's only 124 minutes, but it drags on and on and on. It's so goddamn boring. So, what happens is... She survives this decompression well everybody does nobody d really dies in this movie what happens is the, the the people get like unconscious so the pilots get struck by lightning they go unconscious the Andrea and the, and the fat guy they get knocked out unconscious and she's not unconscious because you know when the plane decompressed with a hole that got struck in it by the plant by the lightning bolt because she had the oxygen mask on. So now, you, the audience, are forced to deal with the only person who can save the plane, the only person who can really do anything and communicate with the people at the tower is this annoying 13-year-old girl with this voice that just is just like nails screeching on chalkboard and she's crying and whining and bitching all the time. and It's really, really wonderful. It's, it's a wonderful way to spend your time. It's very entertaining. No. No, it's not. It's not entertaining at all. <laughs> Trust me. So, anyway, so... So now you go to the air traffic controller place, and the father and the mother meet up with air traffic control guys. There's one guy I don't mind. <clears throat> Charles Edwin Powell, who plays Jeff, the AT... The, uh, their traffic controller guy. I liked him. I thought he had a nice a bit of... It looked like he gave a shit. And I didn't mind his character. Uh, 
cheesy ass nineties hairstyle notwithstanding. I didn't mind his character. I thought he was genuine. And Joe Montani is okay. There's some point moments where he kinda doesn't really give his all, but there's some moments where he's alright. But other than that I thought the sports of sporting cast was lame. Just shitty actors. It was a low Canadian low budget movie. They got who they could get, but still. And that's like based on a book too. I'm like is the book this stupid? Anyway what happens is she gets fine. You don't want to know how she contacts, gets the community, gets the microphone to work so she can communicate with air traffic control. She just smacks the control, you know, panel like like she's the Bonds in Happy Days. Just oh, I'm tired of this. Yeah, I'm tired of this. this. <clears throat> Hello, is anybody there? Oh, we got you. Uh, blah 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 blah. Uh, plane 109. Are you there? And I'm like, wow. Pull the fucking happy days shit. It works in Back to the Future because that's Back to the Future, and it's actually used as a joke. And all the where we can't start, where Marty can't start the DeLorean, so he smacks his head on the steering wheel and then it honks and then it starts. It's a joke. This is just, this is bullshit. This is just plot convenience. Just just smacks it, and it works. And so then they come up with this bullshit idea, this stupid ass plan, ripping off Air Force One, a much better movie than this film. Are you gonna have a a gas, you know, a plane, that a refueling plane, tanker plane, just fly over there to this plane that's, you know, being on, running on autopilot now. Yeah, yeah. The, the whole control board got electrocuted earlier by a lightning bolt, but somehow the autopilot still works. Genius plot line. Wonderful screenwriting. Well, what do I expect from the guy who wrote Frankenstein and me? Okay, about kids who I guess they make their own Frankenstein monster or some shit or they find the Frankenstein. I mean Anyway, so All I remember about that is the trailer and Burt Reynolds happens to be in that movie for some reason and no he doesn't play Frankenstein so anyway what happens is she tries to communicate with the tower. The tower tells her about the plan, but then the the microphone cuts out before she hears the rest of it. So here's their bright idea. Get the tanker plane to come over there. They're going to extend the thing that, you know, refuels the plane and somehow communicate with the girl who you have no way of communicating to because you lost communications to get her to open the door from the inside so then they can, the, the, Pilots and the guys on the tanker plane and the, and the are gonna put the boom that connects the you know the you know the basically pumps the oil into the plane and they're gonna put like somehow navigate it into the door of the plane and I'm like why don't they just put it through the hole in the side of the fucking plane and then what happens they try to they can't communicate with her and then Joe Montana. He comes up, looks at it like a toy that the air tra traffic control guy, Jeff, has. Because he's a big fan of airplane toys for some reason. And he's like, well, I'm not an airplane expert or anything. But why don't you just put the boom into the hole, hole in the side of the plane? And then the, there's another guy who has to chime in. And he's like, yeah, that's a genius. You're a genius. I'm like, yeah. Because that's the idea you should have had from the beginning. Because it's stupid. Come on. That's some shitty screenplay talking. Shitty ass screenplay talking there for you, folks. You start out the movie having an unlikable, rich brat who you don't give a flying fuck what happens to her in the middle of the fucking air. You don't care. Like I said, she can get sucked out of the plane and you and the audience are just, mm, whatever. Then the other people that are survivors don't have any set of personality or any kind of backbone, so you don't really care for them either. So there's really no one to root for in this movie, which is wonderful. At least I had Catherine Hicks in, in, in Turbulence. Lauren Hawley wasn't much, but she was nice to look at. I, fucking, I rooted for Ray Liotta to win, to win in that movie. At least... And Ray Liotta's better than anybody in this movie, and he's overacting his ass off. So, I will say it. This movie gave me, a, this watching this shitty movie Airspeed made me appreciate the first turbulence a lot more. 
I seriously, like I said, if you've ever seen this movie, which I suggest you do not see this movie, Turbulence is a masterpiece compared to this shit. So anyway, they finally come up with the G, you know, the plan they should have had from all along. Instead of, you know, doing some bullshit plan. Like, they can't communicate with the person that can't communicate. We can't do anything until we communicate with the person that we can't communicate with. So we can open the door from the inside so she can open it. Which, how the fuck is a 13-year-old girl going to have enough strength to open the fucking door? She's going to be sucked out with the goddamn fucking door. And then, you're going to have the, somehow have the bullshit plan of having the boom that refuels the plane, which is really thin, and we're somehow going to have a guy climb, shimmy across that onto the plane, dealing with all the wind shear and shit in the middle of the fucking air. It's just, this movie made my head hurt. It was that fucking implausible, everything that fucking happened in this movie. And there was shit that could have just been taken care of and a lot easier than it ultimately was. And I hate movies like that. That take options that are just... That's like turbulence. I'm like, oh, oh, you need to reprogram the autopilot. No, 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 I'm going to trust the killer. Same shit happened in this movie. Same dumbass shit. So, not the killer part, but same dumbass decisions. So anyway. Yeah, like I was saying earlier, this is a book. I hope the book was not this fucking, fucking stupid. So anyway... This is a tough movie to review because I just watched this and I don't remember a goddamn thing. It's that forgettable. It is such a... You watch it and two seconds later you don't remember a goddamn thing because your brain chooses to forget it for you for good reason. It's like, you don't need to remember this fucking shitty ass movie. It'll just make you... drive you insane. Come on. You don't need to remember this shit. Your brain's shutting itself off when it comes to the memories of this movie for good reason because it's trying to protect your ass. Anyway... So what happens is, I'm trying to remember the order of this, okay, the guy, the, the, the fucking gas plane guys come up, and they try to fit the thing in the hole, <laughs> they try to fit their pole in the hole, and um, it doesn't work, well, they get it in there after, you know, multiple tries, and then... It's for some reason they have to activate it, something on the end of it that'll keep it from getting sucked out of the plane. So they asked the little girl to go over there with a bat that she stole from her dad because she's being a bitch because she had an argument with her dad about Roberto Roberto Clemente because her dad was like Roberto Roberto Clemente was the best baseball player and for some reason she acted like a bitch and was mad at him and said no oh, it's not and being a fucking stupid ass movie anyway so she stole that bat and so now she's told to use it to hit the thing hit the boom and have something activate like I said it makes no goddamn sense and of course she doesn't hit it she's standing there with the bat and she's like <laughs> for like what seems like five uncomfortable ass minutes it's not that long but it feels like it and then, of course, the, the, the pole thing gets sucked out of the plane. And she almost gets sucked out of the plane, but she has to grab the cell phone real quick. It's the only way she can communicate now, because she just suddenly remembered that her aide or whatever, Andrea, had a cell phone on her. Could have done that a lot earlier, uh, before you Fonzarelli the fucking, you know, the fucking air, the panel on the fuck, in the fucking cockpit. So anyway, yeah, so that that plan doesn't didn't work and it, it was a stupid plan anyway. So then their traffic controller guy who was his plan from the beginning was a great one. And so then the air traffic controller guy his next plan is oh well we're going to have the girl uh take out the landing gear. You know, find a way to you know get the landing gear to pop out. And then they're going to have the 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 refueling plane fly up underneath the landing gear and they have like a guy with like a grappling grappling hook or something bungee shit jump onto the fucking wheel of the plane while it's in midair at like 30,000 feet or some shit and you literally see this guy navy seals whatever guy jump off the, from the back of the cargo plane onto the a wheel of the plane while it's in air. I'm like, 
the bullshit. I can't take this. You just have a wind shear. You think about how fast the plane is moving. How, what, all the, there's no fucking way some guy, even if he has like straps and shit on his back connected to the plane, is going to be able to get onto the fucking wheel. But anyway, he does it. And if it was a better movie, I could look past it because it's kind of a cool idea. And so he gets on the plane, you know, and then he starts saving people. Like Air Force One, you know, where you put people on the grappling hook thing and then repel them out of the plane. Well, Elisha Cuthbert has to be like, oh, you know, she's like, I gotta, she's just trying to do the right thing, I know. Get everybody off the plane, other than her. But she's just trying to wake up the fat guy. Like, wake up, wake up, blah, blah, blah. She's spending so much time with this. And the plane guys only have a limited amount of time to get her off the plane. And so she basically chooses to sacrifice herself in a way for this one guy, which is admirable. But like I said, I don't give a shit about this girl anyway. I'm just thinking, like, what are you doing? If I was in this scenario, I, even if it was somebody I knew, I knew and somebody that I knew and loved me, I know that while they're unconscious, they don't, they, they can't tell me what to do. But I know in my heart that they want me to live. They want me to live. If there's only one option, and the option is me living on and being there to mourn them versus me dying with them I'm pretty sure they would want me to live so I'm gonna choose to live call me an asshole I don't care I'm gonna choose to live rather than fucking crash with the plane because I'm trying to do save everybody in a limited amount of time frame frame and a crazy situation that I have no control over so I'm going to choose to live. So fuck me. I don't care. I don't care if some people, oh, you're a selfish asshole. So what? I think the person that I know and love who's unconscious at that moment in time would feel the same way. If they were conscious, I'd be like, come on, we got to go. But there's only room for two. There's only room for one. I can't, you know, you go. And they're like, no, you go. And I'm like, okay, all right. I'm going to miss you. You know, I'll remember you. I love you. You know, go! You know, alright, fine. But no. No, she stays behind. And of course, Warriors are parents sick. And they overact with their emotions, which isn't believable. And the air traffic control, or the air traffic control uh, headquarters, especially with the lead act, with the mother, the actress who plays the mother. Really unbelievable. Really hamming it up with her emotional performance. Then... Oh, I forgot a shitty line of dialogue before they start rescuing. She's like, oh, hey, rescue guy. Can you, when are you going to start rescuing people? I'm like, when are you going to start rescuing? I'm like, when are you going to start, re rescue guy? When are you going to start rescuing? That sounds really kind of a bad thing to tell the, like, when am I going to start? I'd be like, when am I going to start rescuing? I'm going to start rescuing you whenever, whenever, you know, it's safe to start rescuing you. What the hell? <laughs> Anyway, it was just the. It's. <sighs> so anyway, now the plane is on autopilot. Doesn't work. It's just jammed or some shit. They try to shut it off, but it, they can't land the plane manually. Excuse me, I just burped there. Fuck it, I don't care. You know this movie makes me want to puke anyway. So, <laughs> the stupidity. Yeah, the, the ending of the film is somehow, some way, somewhere, Elisha Cuthbert grabs the bat and literally just smashes the autopilot with the bat, and that makes the autopilot disengage, and she's able to pilot the plane. Literally, this shitty ass movie has a 13 year old girl land the fucking plane. I mean, it's unbelievable when you have Karen Black landing a plane in airport movie sequels. Yeah, okay. Stewardess lands the plane. But a 13-year-old is really, really stretching the imagination. So, and I, I, for me, it's like, it's bullshit anyway, because you can't disable an autopilot by smacking it with the fucking bats. This is stupid shit. This is dumb as Steven Seagal's attack force, where he blows up a stops the fucking what is it like a virus apocalypse with a fucking grenade just takes a grenade pulls the pin out and drops it on a computer and calls it a fucking day it's as dumb as that shit 
Just fucking taking a baseball bat. I'm getting pissed at that thing too. That thing's pissing me off. I was like, oh god. And then. Yeah, she disables it. And of course, what do you, how do you think the fucking movie ends? She lands as a plane, miraculously, somehow. Her 13-year-old arms can, can actually be able to handle turbulence and handle the, the weight and the strength of the plane's pull. I mean, it's not easy to, to pilot a plane. You have to be have a certain amount of upper body strength to fucking move the steering wheel. At least that's what I think. It looks like it's really difficult. I don't think it's as easy as so easy a 13 year old can do it. Or a caveman. It's not as easy as so an air traffic controller guy and just be out there and be like, okay, do this, do this, do this, do this, and do this, and do this, and now you're good. I don't think a plane, a commercial airline, is that easy to fucking maneuver or learn how to use it in that short amount of time. So anyway, she lands a plane, everybody's fine, she meets up with her parents, she's sorry about it being a spoiled little brat to her dad, her dad is like, I'm sorry, it's my fault, I was too busy, You're like, yeah, whatever. And then she's like, oh, Roberto, Roberto Clemente is the greatest, like, oh, yeah, because he used his bat to disable the autopilot, and, oh, fuck. And she meets Jeff, the air traffic controller guy. And he's like, right to left. I'm like, yeah, I got a right to left for you. Okay. Right. Left. <laughs> right to left. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah. It's safe to say, I, I did not like this movie. This movie fucking sucked. So, um, it's just, there's nothing about this movie I thought was remotely any good except for some... Uh, like a half ass performance by Joe Montana, but was better than anybody else in the movie ever than the air traffic controller guy. I hated Elisha Cuthbert in this movie. She was annoying little rich bitch, always whining. She was really obnoxious in the beginning, really unlikable. Then she's trying to have her story arc where she's changing and being a better person, and I don't care because she's just annoying the fuck out of me. So she's like, eh, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so scared. <laughs> and I'm like, oh god, just I just kept waiting for the movie to end. I stopped the movie, like literally, I was interrupted while I was watching the movie. My parents were like, it's dinner time, and I'm like, you know what? Good, thank you. You saved me for <laughs> twenty more minutes of this piece of shit. So yeah, I stopped it and then went and ate dinner, and then I came back and finished the rest of it. I went back, I went on Skype with my friend Matt and chatted for a little bit like the te with the texting cause I, and I didn't even pay attention to the goddamn movie. I didn't want to rot any more of my brain cells and it already did. And then, literally, my, while I was watching the last few minutes or so, I had had some chicken that I had for dinner. I had some extra excess gristle. And I was focusing more of my attention on chewing the gristle in my mouth than the, watching the fucking movie. Okay, you know you got a bad movie when I'm I'm focusing more of my attention and more of my willpower on chewing a piece of gristle. Yeah, airspeed, a piece of gristle was more important to me than you. Anyway, I really don't know what to say about airspeed. Like I said, it's air shit. It's a fucking big ass dump of a movie. Uh, it's just a wet fart right in your face and just, you know, that just that pungent aroma just going right up your nostrils and just, just you know, going right through every orifice and every part of the insides of your body and just lighting them on fire. It's just really unpleasant, boring, excruciatingly dull excruciatingly stupid movie that I really, really, really hated. So I really don't know what to say about Airspeed except it fucking sucked. I don't want to see it in my face. I don't want Airspeed anywhere near me. I, I mean, I literally, I, no, fuck Airspeed. I'm getting rid of that VHS as soon as fucking possible. So, and I highly suggest anybody who at all has heard of this movie, avoid it. It's not even funny. It's not even so bad it's funny. It's just fucking shitty. It's just a shitty movie.
It's a it's a disaster movie, all right. The whole fucking movie is a disaster of epic proportions. So anyway, I really don't want to say about airspeed. Right here, five stars. Then I have half a star for Joe Mantegna and the guy who played Jeff. So Charles Edwin Powell. That's it. That's it. Nothing else about this movie was good. The effects sucked ass. The plane looked fucking wooden. They had like a model. I understand that, but it had no motion to it. It looked fake as fuck. It looked faker than shit I saw in Concord, Airport 79. And you had a lead actress, child actress, Elisha Cuthbert. She turned into a smoking hot fox. Great. Doesn't excuse her shitty performance in this movie and her annoying ass character that I wanted to punt out of the goddamn plane. And then other characters that were knocked out unconscious who had nothing to do and literally I'm just like well, you're sitting there watching this unconscious people and you're like and, and the movie's so goddamn boring you're like I, can I just join them can I just take a nap for the rest of this goddamn movie anyway yeah that's airspeed so anyway thanks for watching and I just I, I gotta do this like I fuck it's a little, uh, little bit of a release here. Fuck, fuck, fuck you, you motherfucking piece of shit. Air speed, you air shitting, fucking motherfucking cut sucking, ball licking, you son of a bitch. Fuck, damn it, you fuck. Hold on to your life. Yeah, well, hold on to this piece of shit. Fuck this goddamn piece of fucking shit. Wasted hour. Wow. It's an hour and 24 minutes of my fucking life that I wish I had back. Rather than watching this piece of Anyway, thanks for watching my rant in airspeed, and uh, that's good therapy, and I'll see you guys later. See ya.